What's going on boys and girls? Welcome back to another Solo Leveling Arise video. Before I continue with this video guys, I want to just quickly say a big thank you to all the support and love I've been getting for these videos that I've been putting out. Um, this has been actually one of the most fun games I've played in a while. And it's been an absolute pleasure doing these guides for you and I've, I've been loving the community. This has been one of the greatest experiences from a gaming perspective and a content creating perspective I've had. The only thing that comes close to this even remotely was Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis and probably Street Fighter Duel. So I want to thank you guys very much for all the love and support so far. Uh, I can plan to continue doing these for a very long time, especially with the way the game's been going and the fact that I love this game very much with the IP. Now, with that being said, I want to give you guys my honest review of the game. Okay, um, I was going to originally wait till I finished up doing my full free to play account with the SR challenge, but I figured I may as well do this now because I think that's going to amplify my experience even more. And I, and I truly do believe that. So let's talk about the good and the bad. I'm going to give you guys a full review of the things that I love and the things that I hate and the things that I'm looking forward to them fixing, which I believe they will do. And the fact that we have a journey to go to global and how I think this game is going to continue growing like exponentially compared to what it is right now all right so first off let's talk about the good when i first started watching the trailers for this game i thought the combat was janky boy oh boy am i ever ever happy that i was wrong about that this has got to be one of the deepest combat systems i've ever played in my life period not only because you get to control a main character which for once in in any ip is op and amazing and you, you always want to use him but also you have a squad of hunters that makes the gameplay so unique and different in every situation and i love the fact that this game allows you to use those hunters in various formats and also use them with sung uh sung jin woo and also a tandem of both right where you can fight dra giant dragons for example and everybody fights together so i think the combat system is probably the deepest combat system of any game i've ever played not to mention you only you also get to play with stats here you know upgrade your character's abilities uh equip different skills uh, have blessing stones there's just a plethora of things to do and i think the addition of adding in jobs and i hope they continue to do this or, or make some additional changes to it have given this a layer of of depth that most arpgs on mobile games do not have this is to me is comparable to an actual triple a title action rpg game nowadays not talking about old school because those are way deeper but going into for example a story mode that's hard and seeing uh mobs have different various elements and different various buffs such as thunder or poison around them it just reminds me like going into a hard mode dungeon in like diablo right where you you like you'll find an elite mob and you're like oh my god look this guy has like you know can shoot bombs out of his ass this actually has that which is crazy because it makes you feel like you're playing in an actual real arpg like lost ark or or, or Diablo. So it definitely has that look and feel with a much more complex combat system. So the combat system is by far the best one I think I've played ever in my life. Whether it's you're using your support and setting the proper support up for defense down, buffing, using the proper elements, or you know, bringing in a healer, etc. Every layer of your your combat system setup matters. Uh, and not only that, but all the weapons have impact. They all have an impact. Not only are there elements for weapons, but every weapon has a uniqueness to it. For example, these two have breaks, and also one has crit, and one has the uh, attack up. One is a ranged weapon, one is a close combat weapon. One, two of these weapons give you a shield. One increases your attack power. One gives you a counterattack with an AOE. One here is a scythe that uh, harvests, takes away your HP, but also gives you a life steal. Uh, another one here has a freeze ability with an AOE uh, bubble that you can lay around and pop. And not to mention... All the SR weapons make an impact. Every single one of them make an impact. So the the complexity behind this game is intense and in a good way. I'm talking about like it's not like you're it's complex to a point where you're like I, I it's too much and I don't want to play it. It's complex to a point where like everything matters and you care about what you do. So the combat system, guys, is incredible. Incredible. Now the other thing that I love about this game is the way the story mode is set up. And I'll be honest with you guys, there is a lot of um there's a lot of things to accomplish here and it's beautiful beautiful because you can always go back and not get three stars and, and redo the storylines to continue getting those things one thing i do love about this game is that every single time you do complete the story mode as well as all your achievements they do provide you guys with tickets to summon which i think is pretty generous as well as crystals and other resources along the way when you three star uh some stuff so there's plenty of resources to go around in the beginning 
I'm hoping they somehow do more of that later on with events and brand new things that come out. So if in, from a story perspective, it's told really well. The comics, the graphics, uh, the look and feel is very Manuel-like and somewhat anime-like as well too. The characters are, are true to their nature. Everything is represented accurately and every fight, every boss fight feels intense. So for example, every, a lot of people who are free to play are stuck on Igris, right? And, and it makes you look like you are feeling the same impact uh, Jin Wu feels like when he fights Igris for the first time. It's a really, really tough battle. They've captured the essence of the manhwa and the anime so well in the story mode uh, with giving you additional resources and a, f a sense of accomplishment when you actually finish a battle, a boss battle. So they've done that really, really well, and I, I have to congratulate Netmarble for that. I think that's one of the things that they've done um, better than most other companies I've ever seen. Hard mode is the exact same thing. Again, you don't have to relive the story, which is great. You just have to go for the resources and hard more challenges are actually very tough. So that's something I do applaud them for as well too. Another thing that I love about this game and is the various game modes. There's just so much to do in this game, especially when you're starting to get to end game, right? Uh, not only are there instances to farm accessories and equipment, there's gates here which you can challenge various gates to get yourself prizes, shadows, uh, resources, crystals etc but after you've done that you also get to mine as well and and get additional resources along the way so that's been a really really good thing that they've done as well too um in terms of battlefield of trials this is your tower system very challenging in the beginning especially it gets very challenging and as you as you progress here you do feel there's a str strategic element to each stage so it makes you want to think as a player how can i equip better equipment or the proper equipment to advance through a stage like recently that i did 26 which was a full field of elves uh which i had to figure out what, how many do i kill before i fight the boss etc right there was a very very uh strong element of strategy behind this battle and then there's of course the dps check ones where you just need to have higher dps to advance so there's a lot of different elements but not only that they let you do the trials for uh sung jin woo but also for your hunter so you can go back in and get additional resources and also test the merit of your hunters as well too speaking of hunters i love that they focused on that as well too. Hunters are such a big part of this game, not only for their own solo play, but for the support they bring to Song Jin Woo as well too. And SR Hunters do matter quite a bit, so don't ignore those. This is such a complex system. They have their own SSR weapons. You can equip regular SR weapons. They have their own elements. Uh, there's quite a bit of uh, complexity behind these hunters and what they can do and not only that when you pull an SSR it makes you feel good there's sometimes SSRs require dupes most of them do not to be valid so that's the beauty of it the SR units are also extremely powerful when when duped up and ready to go for action um, and the fact that they all have their own personality and skills brings a again a level of simplicity yet complexity to the game that most ARPGs don't have so again beautiful beautifully well done for, by Netmarble on this and there's just so much much to do now let's go about um, the shop I'm gonna be honest with you guys the shop is actually fairly cheap for a gotcha system I, I'm very I'm very surprised I thought being that barbell that we're gonna be, be paying an arm and a leg to to actually look pretty OP if you are planning to spend it's not a very expensive shop just please spend responsibly I did a guide for the pay to win shop so make sure you check that out I love the army of shadows this is something that they brought to life and I it feels like when you're summoning them that you are actually like seeing the impact they bring to the battle and it's really cool because each one has a specific element or a specific uh, buff they bring so this is like for example tank brings defense uh, uh igris brings attack blades brings crit and um iron brings hp and then of course we have tusk back there who we don't know what he does yet because he's not on, he's not unlocked and then of course we have Bir biru coming and other other ones coming in the future so looking forward to that the only the only downside to this and i'll talk more about that in the downside part uh there is a downside but we'll discuss that later so i do love this and i love the fact that you have to unlock them by farming these little shadows it does take a while but it makes you feel accomplished when you finally do get one of them and get those buffs along the way so incredibly well done system in that regard as well too uh um, um, and then let's go here challenges this is extremely free to play friendly the beauty of this is they give you a lot of summoning tickets plus resources as long as you follow it so definitely work on this i think every game should have one of these challenge systems and allow us to get free ssrs for example this one for example gives you a free scythe twice as a matter of fact right so you get a free ssr weapon for those free to play players it does benefit them to follow that plus you get a lot of bonuses along the way, right? So missions also fairly easy to do. Achievements give you quite a bit of things. The crafting system is actually very, very, um, 
is good, but it's also very expensive. So again, we'll talk about more of that very uh, coming up. The special commissions I love because you can farm special commissions as much as you possibly want. As long as you complete these, you get yourself crystals as well too, and then you can get yourself summoning tokens. So a lot of people should be focusing on these in gates and in regular stages. You can just do regular stages with no stamina, auto it, and just continue farming these. So this is actually really great for those who are bored and are just needing resources. This is something that free-to-play players should 100% take advantage of. Um, the battle class is kind of so the more you level up the more resources they give you so this is this kind of pushes you to kind of get yourself at a higher, higher higher cp just not for the fact of having it but just to be able to get that and then the armory system here which is kind of nice too you get to level up some of your equipment allowing you to get more power uh, and then you can kind of show it off while you're doing so okay so there you guys go i want to talk about all the good the game itself i i'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys is one of the best games i've played in a very long time um so in regards to what it does, it does really well. Like really, really well. Now, let's talk about the bad, because there is some bad. It's not a perfect game. It's an early release game. There are some things we need to talk about. So number one, let's talk about performance issues. If you don't have an intense amount of RAM, there are a lot of crashes. On a PC that's still very, very powerful, that can play high-end games, it does crash. On mobile, it does crash a lot and does lag. In the beginning, a lot of the times things were crashing. They have been fixing things over time, but performance issues are a big big problem and they need to actually look into that. This game has no business taking up as much RAM and memory as it does uh, on PC. No business. So that's problem number one, okay? Problem number two, early access, okay? As much as I love being Canadian and have taken advantage of this, everybody can technically log in using a VPN and play the game, but early access has called, caused a little bit of drama. Now, there's no issues anymore because we all know we're going to be under one big mainframe and everybody will have their own sub-server, which means you won't be competing with us. You'll have your own, your own new server to play with. That makes it a lot easier. Um, so that has been kind of rectified and it's at least we have a little bit of knowledge around it. Let's talk about number two. Um, AFK rewards, they're not, there's not enough of it, right? Like you don't get enough AFK rewards when you claim them, um, unless you obviously have the special pack, which means you'll have to buy the $9.99 a month pack to get yourself 30% more EXP, gold, etc. right? That will really help. But for those free to play players, they're going to be behind quite a bit because of that. So I know that leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. I don't think it's that expensive, but I understand the concept of not being to spend, being able to spend or just wanting to stay free to play. So that is an issue in itself. Uh, let's talk about the biggest problem, biggest elephant in the room, gold. Everything requires gold. You want to level up a skill, you require gold. You want to you want to change your stats, <laughs> you require gold. You want to take off anything that's plus six or more in, in accessories, you require gold. You want to replace accessories, you require gold. Uh, you want to level up weapons, you guessed it, you require gold. Everything in this game requires gold and it is the hardest thing to get in this game. It's the biggest cap for all players is gold and the current acquisition of gold is ludicrously low we definitely need to have that increase for all players or start removing some of those systems that require it for example don't charge us for skill for, for skills don't charge gold for that don't charge us to unequip equipment don't charge us to replace equipment these are all things that you can mitigate and and if you don't want to increase the gold acquisition rate lower some of the costs right gold is the biggest problem and one of the reasons a lot of people will quit and i promise you that now the second biggest problem outside of that is going to be the draw system um, the draw rates are extremely extremely low very very low okay uh the beauty is there is a pity that moves over but because the system is the the system is really low rate a lot of people are not being able to keep up with the currencies and it's extremely difficult to get limited tickets so you're going to rely on your crystals as a free-to-play player which means you will not be able to summon on this banner whatsoever without having your regular tokens because then you're wasting it on limited characters when they come out so that's a big one as well too okay so that's something they definitely need to change up um, and i think that pretty much highlights the most difficult problems of this game everything else i think is is fairly straightforward the higher end content that you go into for example when you get into the battlefield of time or power of destruction you'll be able to get some of that higher instant stuff for sure oh another thing gates they need to have keep more often keys keep keys uh drop more often or being able to get them somewhere because gates are an amazing part of the game and a great way to get experience points and gold but there's just not enough gate keys to be given around so that's something they also need to change and at the same time give us a free summon daily like give us a free summon daily. most games give you one free daily summon give us one i don't see why why we don't have that i think that's a crazy thing not to have um outside of that though i think the game is incredible i'm looking forward to the progress guys if you ask me out of 10, I'd give this a 9 out of 10. 
Not a perfect score because of some of the smaller issues I have, but 9 out of 10 for sure for everything that it does for an early access game. And I cannot wait, guys, for further content and the roadmap that they've released. All right, guys, it's Payne. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.